Sycamore in us. That's a good stretch. He's not dead, bro. Okay, nuts on the table. What's the biggest announcement at the Game Awards tonight? I'm going to say Hades 3. Just off the top of the dome piece, Hades 3. You heard it here first. Grand Theft Auto 6 available in stores uh, this Christmas season. Rockstar's been honey dicking us. They actually have had the whole game done since COVID. Second flavor of Mina cookies. You know, I mean, I will be there no matter what. Second row two. What's going on? Did, 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 did uh, Danny kind of forget about Elden Ring? Where's the Elden Ring DLC? Isn't the game like three years old? My singing monsters too, bro. New character for Guilty Gear? I said biggest announcement, okay? No disrespect. What do you say fuck me for? I got nothing against Guilty Gear. I got nothing against Arc System Works. There we go, Stardew Valley squash update. We've, ad we've added ape shit pumps to Stardew Valley. When consumed, it gives you a 10% chance to die instantly. If you don't die, you get a speed boost for the rest of the month. I'm re-rolling you. Oh, you're a good baby! Me when my daughter says she has to go pee, and then I say, can you hold it till we get to Costco? And she says, I think so, and then she fucking does. True story, by the way. Lauren Malvo added to Fortnite. Don't tease me, motherfucker. Don't tease me. I would go back to Fortnite in a heartbeat. If they added Lauren Malvo. Who's Lauren Malvo? It's Billy Bob Thornton's character from Fargo Season 1, bro. I want red stew. You should watch Fargo now. At least the first few seasons. I kind of fell out of it. I kind of want to watch the new season, but it's on FX. Season 1 clears. It's crazy because I want to be the snob and say that season two is actually the best season of Fargo. It's a really good, I feel like plot wise, season two is the best. But Billy Bob Thornton is so good in season one. And I mean, it's a little bit of a spoiler, but I will say the show has been out for like, I don't know, this season one has been out for like seven or eight years at this point. When they do the, and anime fans, you're going to love this. The time skip, when they do the time skip, the show goes crazy, dude. And Martin Freeman, not my favorite actor of all time. But absolutely goaded at playing like a guy who originally seems like a normal guy and then becomes uh, an absolute, like the most detestable sniveling Jerry Lundegaard-esque coward that's like ever existed in media. Like he's actually, as time goes on, you're like, whoa, this Lorne Malvo guy is evil. The more you watch Fargo season one, the more you're like, wait a minute, no, no, no. Martin Freeman is actually the evil one. Lorne Malvo is also really really evil <laughs> like at least he he wears it on his sleeve ah no oh, why not 
Why is he named like a Star Wars character? He's literally not. He's just named Lorne. And then maybe, I don't know, like his grandparents were like Polish or something. <laughs> it's not a Star Wars character, bro. That's just what like people are named in the Midwest. Season 5 has Juno Temple in it. What the hell is Juno Temple? Is this some shit they built for the Trojan War? Thought I had you, brother. It's my first time here in Lorne. Really? Lorne is a... It's a noted name. For, for an older guy. It's, it's not a top 10 older guy name. But it's... I would say it's in the top 250. Juno Temple from Ted Lasso. What, Ted Lasso is set in the ancient Roman Empire. Larry gotta be number one. I gotta think about that. You certainly don't meet a lot of Larrys or Lawrences, people that are like my age or younger. If you are one, I honestly, I think Larry's kind of a cool name. Ron, dude, Ron is so good. What's the video that, that goes, uh, the lady says, damn it, Ron. Or really, Ron, nice one, Ron. What? what? And then he's like, what was I supposed to do? Oh, what, I can't sneeze? That's it. <laughs> oh, man. I, I'm not supposed to sneeze? So good. The dude sneezes and scares the deer. That's a, that's a certified hood classic, man. Oh, man. And I think, fellas, we can all say, he's right. What's he supposed to do, man? It's like an involuntary action. No, I'm not saying wife bad. I'm just saying like she could have been nicer about it. Hold the sneeze until you get to Costco. You got more strength than I do, that's for sure. Was she even rude? Well, it's the, there's a tone to it. Listen, I'm not, I'm not trying to walk into any accusations here. The way she said it, very, she had a sarcastic tone to it. Nice one, Ron. I think it's... I, I'm not saying he should have responded the way he did. But I'm saying I can see where the emotion came from, certainly. So women can't have a tone now? I'm just saying her tone could have been nicer. <laughs> Listen, I treat my wife well. I'm not going to start playing from behind the eight ball just because my great-great-grandfather was like a piece of crap, okay? I'm not... I, it's, I know women have been told that they need to be nicer for like, you know, centuries. And now you're... No, no, no. You got me all backwards. She specifically in this situation should have been nicer because she can't do anything. His husband, her husband can't do anything about the sneeze, okay? That being said, can I tell you something my wife did yesterday? Kate, are you here? I want you to be able to not, not even have to defend yourself because there's nothing to defend. But at least be able to answer any questions that chat might have about the subject. We went to Costco last night. Got the hot dog combo, buck fifty each. It's an insane deal. It always will be. Um, she didn't eat the hot dog right away. Because she said, I'm sick of the Costco not having relish. So she, we took it. I ate mine in the car. She took hers home, put her own ketchup, relish, and mustard on it, and then ate it at the dining room table. I actually, I feel like I learned something about my wife. She doesn't just, she's not like a relish enjoyer. She's like a true relish believer. I personally, if they had no condiments, I like a little mustard on my hot dog. If they had no condiments, 
I would eat the plain hot dog right away. I'm not, I don't have the kind of like impulse control to not eat the hot dog on the way home. She's, she has a value set and she stuck with it. And I'm very impressed. Plain hot dog is no good, dude. Listen, a little mustard hits just right. But, and the, I, I just want to be clear. Obama voice. Um, hot dogs are not good for you. But I feel the same way eating one that I do when I drink like a ice cold Coke Zero from the McDonald's fountain. It rejuvenates me to eat exactly one. Like by the time I finish the Costco hot dog, like I feel like I've, my power level has gone up. It's a little bit of a health potion. Unfortunately, they don't have uh, Coke products in the fountain at Costco. They only have Pepsi products. And the, the Diet Pepsi does not hit the same as Coke Zero. Keep trying, you will never be Coke Zero. So I'm, I'm not getting double up on the health potion, but we roll this. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. These shoes cost $600. These shoes cost $600. Fuck you! Drink water. You know what pisses me off? All these motherfuckers be like, how many Diet Cokes is that today? And then I find out that they're like, oh, hang on. I didn't hear your answer. I was taking my daily dose of apeshit labs, apeshit pumps, dash insane veins, mixed berry flavor pre-workout. You fucking hypocrites. Also, post what you look like. I'm scared. I'm willing to take health advice from Twitch chat, but you better be like a fucking Adonis, bro. If you just look like a, a normal dude and you're like, I don't drink diet soda, then I'm sorry. Like, I just don't give a shit. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying you're not arguing from a position of strength. <laughs> That's why the president is always so handsome. It's called the halo effect, and I'm not talking about Beyonce. What if I'm a normal dude and I drink diet soda? I support you. Like, almost everybody that you meet is a normal guy. I just don't know why, like... So many people online pretend to not be normal guys. I'm like, brother, look at you. You got bangs. Like, you're normal. Just get over yourself. You're out here giving me health advice in Twitch chat? Don't, don't be shy. Post your fucking VO2 max. Post your watts per kilogram. Even if your watts per kilogram is higher than mine, my ass ain't out here telling you, you know, not to drink... Well, I'll tell you not to drink ape shit labs, but I don't really know what's in the formula. I don't know what Infinergy is made of. Telling a normal guy to post their VO2 max is crazy. Telling a motherfucker as crazy as me to drink water when I drink like five liters of water a day is crazy. Oh, my luck is turbo down. No, I will not drink the Panera Bread lemonade. I don't have a heart condition, but like my ass, those, those deaths always come in threes, bro. I'm not going to be the third... Panera charged lemonade death, okay? It's only like 300 milligrams of caffeine. What is, um... What is a cup of coffee again? Like, I, I, let's just, for, for standardized purpose sake. If you got a grande pike roast from Starbucks, what are we looking at in terms of caffeine? Right, reroll secret room. 80 to 100. So it's like three. No, 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 no. We don't have time. I'm sorry. It's like three. 
cups, three grande pikes from Starbucks. And you could probably drink it a lot faster because it's cold. A grande pike place is 330 milligrams of caffeine? What? Okay, maybe I would drink the Panera Charge Lemonade. That's not kill. I, I mean, again, I don't go to Starbucks, but I, I can face tank a, a grande pike and, and only get therapeutic benefits out of it. I can face no side effects out of that. It is kind of crazy, though, that like the most mom core chain restaurant of all time rizzed up like a little lemonade that could stop your heart. That's surprising. Like, I would have expected that shit from like, <laughs> like Taco Bell. <laughs> I wouldn't have expected that from the place so you get like a, a salad and a broccoli soup from. Nah. Does seem like a Taco Bell move, right? <clears throat> this is not the right room. I just, I find this item not fantastic. It does seem like the kind of drink you get with the Call of Duty Steelbook. Yes, yeah, Librarian, do not drink three charged lemonades. Chat has your best interest in mind here. You could... I'm gonna be honest with you. Like, for the amount of people that are probably drinking the charged lemonade, I'm willing to say you could probably tank the risk of drinking one charged lemonade. Like, it's not a 50% chance to kill you, obviously. That being said, I wouldn't drink two. I think you would just, you'd, you'd stand a good chance to just feel bad. And like overdosing on caffeine just to the point where it feels bad is like one of the worst feelings that you can get without like actually being at risk of dying, I think. You're like nauseous, sweaty, Jittery, and the, there's no cure. You just have to wait it out. What a dumb way to die. What, proving that you're stronger than other people? <laughs> what, that's that's not based anymore? I thought that was like the spirit of uh, of being a human being. I'm not a big this this item guy. Spawns a set of taking five five percent chance of getting a fuck you. Balance the caffeine with an edible. You fuckers getting like anything done? Like I'm taking caffeine to start my day. Like I'm not taking caffeine just for like recreation and then following it up with a. Uh, an edible. That's insanity. Hello, Daniel. Daniel, thank you for the raid. Tonight's our big night, Daniel. Lies of P, nominated for best RPG. A lot of people are saying it's got no shot. Baldur's Gate 3 clears. I think, I think you and I know a little something. I think we can trust the Game Awards to know magic when they see it. Fine. Oh, 0.02 shot speed up. Oh, Isaac in 2023 be like, um, you're, why are you complaining? You got 0.02 shot speed up. Spider-Man 2 for best indie game, please. I, as long as it beats Dave the Diver, I'm cool with that. I know exactly what I'm doing. Do you not like like Dave the Diver? I like it okay. There's a gulf between the critical response to the game and my own opinion, which makes me have a chip on my shoulder. 
I'm, notice I'm not saying this is justifiable. <laughs> it's my own brand of insanity. I'm working on it. it. Has nothing to do with you unless you want it to have something to do with you. Is there a way I could find an easy way to hurt myself? We need the stats, man. Now this was, Candy Heart was a good item. They were on one when they made Candy Heart. When the candy is hard, mmm. When the candy is hard, greater than sign times a million. As Joe Biden said, sundress with no panties, greater than sign, greater than sign, greater than sign. So true. <laughs> Community notes be like, Joe Biden never said that. That was that was a chibli joke. He probably thought it, though, in 1942. Just here to start Act 3, no funny business today. Thank you for checking in, Chibli. You can go get ready for your shift to start. I appreciate that. I appreciate it. You know, 30 minutes early is on time in this organization. You're a good cog in the machine. Well, you don't want to stay and watch the our fourth Isaac run of the day? We've been talking about good stuff. Hey, Chibli, would you ever get a massage from a man? Wait, Dan, are you still here? <laughs> You're the kind of guy I need to ask this. Okay, so like it's easy to answer yes. All right. But if you were if you went to an online massage booking portal and it was like choose your masseuse, what criteria would you start looking by? If you had no experience with any of the masseuses, would you just go first available appointment? Would you would you be like that person looks strong? Grip strength, experience. Who looks nice? That's even more fucked up than like only getting a massage from like one gender, bro. Who looks nice? This shit is as superficial as fuck, bro. It's just a picture. You don't know anything about their personality. Anyway, you weren't supposed to answer that question. Any answer is incriminating. That's the thing. Unless you you lie and say, I just I roll a dice and then just choose randomly. No, you fucking don't. Come on. Personality is not important for a massage. He's the motherfucker who said he wanted them to look nice. Bro, you got your face down in the fucking donut for 45 minutes. What do you care what they look like? Excuse me? You, the donut. You lay down, you put your face in the donut. You ever had a massage? I have had I've had a few massages. Did you see that I mean I got hit anyway, but did you see that dodge? Were they nice? It varied. When I needed to get physiotherapy because my back was fucked up, the massage was the best part for sure. It was always like a 15 minute massage and then like uh I'm sure it works. I'm just making a joke. I'm not trying to say physiotherapy is a lie, okay? It was always a 15-minute massage that made me feel some relief in the area where there was pain. And then, like, 20 minutes of her showing me an exercise that I just went, like, yeah, sure, I'll do it. And then I knew, even as I was getting the lecture, that I was never going to do it. It was always like, you know, get a elastic 
band and then step on it and then stretch your back like this and try to do that for like 20 minutes a day. I'm like, I'm sure it would help, but I'm just, I'm just being realistic. I want to do it, but I don't want to do it enough to actually do it. I want the effects of it without going through the, the work. I mean, I'm not worried about the Zane. It's more like I don't want to lose the D6, but... Holy... Worth it? Balls on the table? Confirmed balls on the table? Are you Bumbo? No, you're, you're Bum Friend, not Bumbo. Where did balls on the table come from? Uh, me wanting to be funny. I think it's funny to... Because people, every, everybody my age is addicted to gambling now. I think it's funny to like... What if you took gambling to the next step? And said like, I'm going to... I'm putting my balls on the parlay. Tyrese Halliburton is getting the triple-double tonight. I'm balls on the table. I don't know what the DraftKings payout is for uh, for your balls on the table. It better be good, but... And then, like, to get your balls chopped off and be like, Ah, oh, my balls just got chopped off. And then your friends are like, It's okay, bro. Tough break. It happens all the time. We go again. Fuck, you're right. You're right. We go again. We go again. <laughs> What, you're going to let your balls getting chopped off stop you from hitting the jackpot? I'm going to keep it a buck fifty with you, man. Everybody in this industry is a snake. Your nuts have no value on the, on the black market, right? I'm sure your kidney has value. A lot of your organs probably have some value. I can't imagine that, that like a nut would have value. And it's not like I'm saying that nuts don't provide utility. It's simply like, back me up on this deal, Guiga. It's a supply versus demand issue. There's just so many men out there. I think like 5% of men on the planet would probably just give you a nut as a joke. So I can't imagine that like the market forces are really generating like a high unit cost per testicle on the, on the deep web. People are pretty stingy with the kidneys. You get two, but you only get two. And like, I'm pretty sure it's nice to have two. I don't know because I've never had one. But I'm like, also kind of, I'm saving that kidney. I don't know if someone in my life will ever need it. I wouldn't have a problem stepping up and, you know, giving a loved one my spare kidney. The only thing is, I think I would want it in writing that, like, I get next. Because <laughs> I don't want to die because I gave a kidney to someone who needed it. And then, like, when it's my turn, they're like, oh, new phone, who this, right? I'd be like, bro, really? Like, I sh if you give someone a kidney, shouldn't you get, like, a, a little card that you can redeem to go like to the top of the transplant list that's actually how it works bro i'm so smart i'm gonna give my fucking kidney tomorrow <laughs> who knows i might need one someday you also get most kidney related costs covered in the future okay hang on what do you mean most like, Blue Cross, Blue Shield is like, thank you for your service, but unfortunately that one... <laughs> we're, gonna need the, we're gonna need your deductible on that one. <laughs> oh, it turns out that surgery, like kidney removal surgery, is not covered by your insurance. So that kidney you donated, that'll be uh, $225,000, please.
I can't believe I got to deal with the devil. Y'all. You know, I kind of like it. What, are, what the heck are you again? Oh, I'm just too much reading. <laughs> That's crazy, man. I think it's crazy that you can, like, again, I'm not a doctor, clearly, or an astronomer. It's crazy you can live with a collapsed lung. Isn't that shit like a balloon? Like, if it pops, how is it holding the air, man? I'm sure it hurts like a you-know-what, but like... You got two of them? Yeah, but like, what? okay, if you get two collapsed lungs, do you die? Or like, need emergency medical attention? Kinda? Or is it just like, extremely painful and uncomfortable? It's okay as long as you have gills. <laughs> I remember, it, like, I went to a rural uh, elementary school. One day, I swear to you this is true, Any, anyone else a rural Andy? One day for show and tell, a girl who lived on a farm brought in a cow's heart and lungs for show and tell. Um, it was the third grade, and I just remember that, like, what you see, uh, like, in a textbook is not really, it's, it's merely an approximation of what uh, the organs actually look like. I expected it would be, like, two bags and, like, a, an artist's depiction of a heart. It was actually just, like, a pile of salami and then, like, a, a red and black ball underneath. And I was, even as, like, third grade, I was, like... This shit is too much. <laughs> I was like, she shouldn't have brought that in. <laughs> One of the other kids brought in like M&M cookies and she was like, check it out. It's an animal's cardiovascular system. But it also, I mean, it's a good lesson to learn, I guess. But it is, it's, it's all just meat in there, man. That's crazy. What's the lesson? I don't know. It fucking is gross inside. Not all lessons have to be actionable. Sometimes they could just teach you something about the world. Is rural Ontario still rural Ontario? I wonder that sometimes. Because I've been, and I, not just Ontario, but, I, you know, I've been living in the city for a long time. It's like, I forget, like, when I left, Kingston was like, fish and chips, french fries, poutine, hamburgers. And now, every time I go to Kingston, I expect it to be, like, traveling, like, you know, 15 years back in the past. But it's actually, like, you know, pho, sushi, 900 different, uh, like, boba tea restaurants. And I'm like, dude... It's like the culture has changed a lot, even in like the decade that I've been away. I wonder what this shit is like in, you know, like Greater Napanee. Like in Greater Napanee, are they still rocking the combination Pizza Hut, Taco Bell, Mr. Sub? Or are they out there like, oh, I'm ordering from like, you know, Dragon Sushi Napanee. I'm getting a... I'm getting a, a Toro roll. Yeah, what's going on in Petawawa? What's what's the number one food on the streets of Petawawa right now? No, thank you. Have you ever had curry from Mango in Kingston? What an insane, hyper-specific question. Of course I've had curry from Mango on Princess Street. I'll tell you, I, I feel bad for the Mango restaurant. In university, I had never eaten there, and then one of my friends ate there in first year, and he said it wasn't very good. I told everybody I knew anytime I walked by it, which was all the time, because downtown Kingston's not that big. And I would go like, oh yeah, apparently that place is not very good. Then like 11 years later, I ate there, and I was like, what the fuck, this place is amazing. <laughs> or at least it's, it's pretty good. I was putting out a hit on their business via word of mouth for like a decade. 
on hearsay. And then I ate it myself, and I was like, this dude didn't know what he was talking about. I would come back here any day. I mean, there's a lot of good Asian food in downtown Kingston. I know you're going to say, really? But I'm telling you, there's some great Thai and Cambodian down there. My girlfriend lives on the same street as that restaurant. Okay, with no disrespect, it's Princess Street, bro. Everybody's girlfriend lives on that street. My ex-girlfriend lived on that street, actually, in Kingston as well. Is it downtown Kingston? You're either on Princess or maybe Brock. And then, you I don't know, maybe if you're a little bougie, you get down into, like, that King Street West area, but... Or if she's at the university, you never know. Maybe she's uh, Albert, Alfred, Frontenac, University Avenue. If she's north of Princess, you know, I might ask you, are you sure the relationship's worth it? You don't want to be walking north of Princess in the wintertime, brother. That's like, you know, from campus, that's like a 20-minute walk. Minus 22 degrees Celsius. You better, you better have a nice winter coat. Let's put it that way. <clears throat> I lived on Johnson Street, right across from the Ark. Hey, that's where I saw um, a drunk dude when they were building the Ark, because I'm older than you. Uh, I saw a drunk dude after trivia night at the grad club climb into one of the construction cranes that they had just left on site, and he was like driving that shit around, and everyone was just, there was no photos really back then. Everyone was just laughing at him and going, whoa, dude. Uh, I wonder how he's doing. He's probably like a senior engineer in charge of like wastewater management at the largest wastewater treatment plant in Ontario, if I had to guess. The, university, the engineering program does pump out some illustrious alumni. And also me. <clears throat> Has the Alumni Center ever reached out to you? They've reached out asking for money, yes. But that's like, you know, that's what they do. I can't be mad at them. That's a given, bro. You went to Waterloo? Waterloo, where the vampires sleep? No, I did not go to Waterloo. You got me confused with Michael A. L. Fox. Waterloo is a better school than the one I went to. I got into Waterloo, but then my parents gave me a sweetheart deal to stay in my hometown. Which is how I ended up being able to eat curry at Mango. <laughs> Waterloo, where they killed Napoleon? Bro, you, you guys don't know shit about Napoleon. Bro died in exile. He lost the war at, at Waterloo. Napoleon, you gotta slow down. Your tactics are too swag. Your bitch is too hot. They're gonna fucking kill you. Except they won't. They'll just exile you again. I would have killed Napoleon, just my two cents. I don't really know the historical ramifications of it. But like, he was like the emperor of France and conquered a lot of Europe. Then they beat his ass and they said, go to this island. Dude broke out and said, fuck it, I'll do it again. I'm not exiling that dude twice. I'm sorry, just, we have to learn our lesson. They already killed like hundreds of thousands of people during the wars, but they're like, Napoleon's a step to- No! What kind of lesson will we give to the, the people of Europe if we commit one more murder? It ends today. <laughs>